On today's Customer Spotlight, we're going to take a closer look at this 2006 Mustang GT. It's been back and forth across the country multiple times and visited almost every state, all in the name of charity. So this is Glenn, his Legend Lime GT has been a regular in the video studio, I mean, for years. When I did an 05 through 09, you're usually the first person I reach out to. But this car's got a really cool story with it, decent amount of history behind it, and I believe you are the original owner of this car. Tell us a little bit about what made you buy this back in 06. Oh yeah, um, I, I ordered the car from Hoffman Ford over here in Harrisburg. Um, gosh, I, when they came up with the 05, 06 models, I had to have it. Um, I had a 68 back in the day. It's kind, kind of really called that back to a lot of those lines. That yeah. yeah. That and around the same time, my dad had a pair of Shelby, a 67 pair. GT350 and a 500, a pair. pair of Shelby's, a okay. Pair. Back when they were like cheap, beat up used cars. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. You know, three, four grand, buy, buy a pretty nice one. So anyway, um, yeah, I was in love with those cars, the 67 uh, GT350 in particular, in Brittany Blue. So my first thought was get one of these in, Brit in the Windvale Blue. Which is similar, to that. yeah. Yeah, yeah, very similar color. And I just, just lo in love with the whole thing. Um, along the time I was really considering that, Carlisle Ford Nationals came up and there was a 67 GT500 there in this color. Under the lights with the, the clear coat on it, it just totally blew me away. So, so I went with that color. Okay, and it is—I mean, it is a throwback color. It definitely kind of fits that retro style they were doing. And yeah, back in the day, it looked kind of crappy, though. <laughs> I mean, they were all kind of kind of faded and flattened. True, just Really true. did not look good at all. But I mean, this thing is holding up with a clear coat, and it, it still looks pretty decent. And even now, yeah, this color is definitely polarizing. Some people absolutely love it, and some people are like, "What color is that?" But yeah. you can't miss it. That's for sure. Now. Again, you bought this car new, and I know you do a lot of rallies. We'll get to that in a minute. But, I mean, how many miles are on this car? Now, I know you drive for an 05 or 06, I should say. It's got quite a few. Yeah, I'm coming up on 170,000 miles, probably before my next oil change. <laughs> yep. And most of them are part of Rally North America. And tell us about your experience there. Yeah, a lot of that is, is on the road with Rally North America. I I personally like driving. I just simply like driving. Mm. And getting out there and seeing how big and how beautiful this country is is, is a big part of that. Um, latched on to Rally North America, and my first event was 2012. Um, what first got me into it was I was here at uh, CJ Pony Parks Customer Appreciation Day, and I think it was 10. Your car was there with the Route 66 stickers on it. I saw the it. stickers on it. And yeah. Tony was there yeah. with his Bull Run Mach 1. And I kind of wonder what the heck this was all about. Looked into it and thought, yeah, this is something I need to do. Uh, 2011 rolled around, just didn't didn't quite work out for me, but 2012 worked. So. Yep, that was the start, and uh, man, I, I can't quit. And 40 plus states, three trips across the country. Three trips across and, the country. And uh, you're still going strong with that. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. I can't wait for the next road trip. Now, obviously, like I said, you drive your car, which we love that here. Nobody, you know, trailer queens, that's not what we like to do here at CJ's. But tell us some of the modifications of the car. I mean, I know you were a customer of the shop back in the day, back when you bought this thing. And I know that it's got a decent amount of work done to it, too. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's it's mostly bold on, so I haven't gone with a power add or anything like that. But I, I tell you, it all, it all started with the, the built aluminum fuel door. <laughs> okay. Okay. We all start somewhere. <laughs> that was the start. Um, and running from back to front, I mean, it's got, well, it's got long tube headers, um, catted X pipe, um, Corsa, Extre Corsa Extreme Touring mufflers, um, short throw shifter, blowfish, uh, shift shift bracket. bracket. Yep. That was in the morning. One of your one of your, one that your videos. One of the videos is yep. was yep. in. Yep. Uh, Four ten gears. Uh, it's been lowered. Um, Got a short throw shifter in it. Um, let me think what else. Oh yeah, of course. The first thing was probably an air, the air intake. Okay. And a tune with that. Again, a lot of bolt-ons. And we see we did the Shelby style grill in the front, a few other small little Shelby touches on it. Yeah, yeah. I, I had to, I had to do some of that, kind of in, in, uh, in tribute to my dad's cars. I was kind of looking at doing the full-on Shelby retro thing with all the parts that were available, but I thought, well, just as, just the, the, like the grill and, and the hood pins is uh, tasteful and not over the top. Now, funny story I've told a lot of people about this car, and this goes back to when you were a customer at the shop. You yeah. were one of the only customers I ever had who came back to me and said, make my car quiet. <laughs> Normally it was like I want loud mufflers, I want loud exhaust, I want loud headers. We did all that, and I think it was a couple weeks later you came back and said, "Okay, how do we make it quiet?" Yeah, now? yeah. I did I did a lot of work in that regard. Again, I want to do road trips, and I'm not a young guy anymore, and my hearing is a little wonky. So, yeah, I I, I needed to tone it down a bit. Um, with the the long tube headers, the X pipe, and those Corsa Extreme Touring mufflers, eh, there's a bit a of a loud, loud side, for yeah. touring. 
So uh, along the way, I mean, I, I gutted the interior and did a complete Dynamat treatment in there. Um, so it, it helped a lot. It makes the car solid. Like the car drives like a quiet, low mileage car. I mean, all that sounding, I think over the years has probably done the trick. It does. I think all the butyl rubber and aluminum, it just kind of makes everything stick together. It, 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 does, yeah. it, does, it definitely See, works. I mean, it, it, the car still sounds great, but I remember last time I drove in this thing, it's, it's not really loud inside. It, it's pretty tame it, inside. It's not, but yeah, yeah, it's, it's not. Um, Still a long trip. I mean, it's it's got a bit of a drone to it. The, the gears are whining a little bit with the yeah. age, and I mean, I, I've resorted at times to putting on a set of headphones just to just to make long hours in the car more. a little more tolerable. Now, obviously, you've had this car for 15 plus years at this point, 170,000 mile. What's next? I mean, what what is the goal with this car? Wow. Um, I mean, obviously, you have another toy at home. We can talk about that in a second. <laughs> but um, yeah, that's for sure. What is the goal with this car? What, what's what's next for Me Team Lime right here? Mechanically, it's, it's where I want. It. It's been there. It's just a matter of maintaining, and uh, as, as you said in the past, you know, uh, a, a part worn and out is a chance for an upgrade. Yep. So yep. yeah, I'm mean, slowly upgrading over the years. Um, suspension bushing need to be replaced. Well, went with polys and yeah, this and that. Um, but yeah, I mean, down the road, um, when this engine starts to get a little soft, I'm really thinking just go with another four, four six. Keep the three valve in it. Keep, keep it original. Keep the three valve in it. Keep that. Not so much original, but I mean, the, the four six is an easy transplant. True. The Coyote's a, mm, a whole lot more work. Uh, but I would like a sixth gear. Yeah, those are nice. I would like <laughs> Especially for the highway. Yeah, exactly. Because this has four tens, I think we put four in this tens, car. Four tens, yeah. Cross country and four tens. It, uh, Which is fast, it's fun, but it gets a little it, out on the highway. It's a blast, but when you get up in triple digits, it's working real, real hard. Yep, I hear you. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. But obviously, like I said, three valve would be a good choice for this, especially because if you want to go fast, you actually have something else cool in the garage at home. And oh I do want to make it over one day and uh, do a video on that. But tell them a little oh. bit about what you have in the garage. Well, the uh, project. Yeah, the project. Um, as I mentioned earlier, my dad had a pair of Shelby's. Mm -hmm. the, the, the Cobra thing was deep in his blood. I remember he and I went shopping looking for a Cobra back in the okay. day. Okay. I uh, didn't really come up with anything, but the, the Shelby's did the trick for him. That was that was great. So, yeah, the Shelby thing goes goes deep in my blood. I see this. I also remember being a 15-year-old kid reading a copy of Road and Track magazine, and there's this grainy little picture of this funny-looking car that had just won the 65 World Manufacturer's Championship. Now that's the Shelby Cobra Daytona Coupe. So, also around the same time, I had a thing for kit cars. Yeah. Uh, the whole paradigm then was take an old VW Beetle, lift the body off. You got the full size floor pan, put it, put it put whatever you want on it. Put a fiberglass yep. body on the top. Maybe keep the VW, maybe turn it around a little bit. So my ultimate dream there was an outfit called Kelmark made a full two frame chassis that had all the same pickup points as the VW platform. Okay, okay. okay? And they do they do pickup points for whatever suspension you want. So a hot setup was a, a late model Corvair front end late model Corvair rear suspension. You're going back in time here. Yeah, yeah. exactly, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, back in time for sure. This is early 70s. Um, uh, the trick set up was to take that Corvair transaxle, flip it over upside down. Okay. With a different bell housing and take a small block Chevy to reverse rotation, you got yourself a mid-engine sports car. So man, Fairly that was a dream. The 70s, I, I, I had it all set up. I had I had the had the the uh, the instruction manuals, the wiring diagrams, all worked out. Everything worked out except the money and the time. God, gotcha. eh, it never happened. So that's a long way to. But I would say what you have now would be definitely a much better choice. Exactly. That that's a long way to answer your question, and that is, yeah, um, I saw retirement in the in the near horizon a few years back. And so I decided to indulge this, it, it, indulge both of those dreams, the Shelby dream and the kit car dream. So I ordered up a Factory 5 Shelby Daytona Coupe kit, okay? It's been a labor of love. For it's many been, years now. For, for six years now. Is it six? And it's because I don't want to build the car the way it comes. If you build it the way it comes, it's definitely a track car, period. Yeah. There's nothing else you're going to do with it. I know your goal track. is kind of like you My said, goal, I want this quiet. I want that car to be streetable. No I want anyway. that car to be streetable. I want to drive that car across country in a road rally someday. I'm not sure if I'll be able to get there. There's a lot that needs to be done because that thing really, really wants to be a race car. Um, but I think I made uh, a bunch of changes that'll help in that direction. Uh, it's going to have power windows that actually go up and down. Mm -hmm. It has a coyote in it. Thank you for sourcing that for me. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> that was a lot of fun. And uh, a, a TKO 600 with the independent rear suspension that's based on the old Lincoln Mark 8 rear end okay. independent rear okay. suspension. So independent rear suspension. Um, 
real windows, a modern engine, oh, power under, steering, under car exhaust, yep. uh, electric power steering, uh, backup camera, you know. All, all, the, I'm, all the cross country I'm, I'm, things I'm you need. Going, I'm going with, uh, yeah, I really want to make this a friendly road car as, as much as I possibly can. And that car with a Gen 2 Coyote, I mean, what is, do you have a weight on that car, what that thing weighs? 2660. 2660. 2660, a little bias to the rear. I think it's 5545 so to the rear. 1,500 pounds ish lighter than the car that the engine came out. <laughs> exactly. So give you an idea of how fast those cars yeah. are. Yeah, I had a dyno tune on it just to get it to run right, not really to go crazy with the performance. It's a dead stock engine, but it does. It's all you need. It does close, to, that, 400, it does close to 400 to the rear wheel. At that weight, that is 2,700 pounds. Well, why need more? Um, I've, I've got 1,700 miles on it at this point. Honestly, I if I put my foot in it, I got a lift by the time I hit 4,000 RPM because those cams wake up and that thing just wants to do stuff that I'm not quite ready for. I can for. imagine. I can imagine. <laughs> well, Glenn, that I'm not. Well, we definitely want to check out the Daytona at some point in the future. Thank you again for bringing this car out. Thank you for being available and a notice when I need a car for installations as well. Anytime. Uh, definitely, if you got a car, a Mustang, you'd love to see in our customer spotlight here. You know, let us know in the comments below. Make sure you subscribe to TJPonyParts.com.